everyone, this is the new Sony 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 GM Mark II lens. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing a real world portrait photo shoot to test this lens out for both photo and video. Let's start just here. I like these two, like the black and white. Kind of look. What is a portrait photographer doing with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens? Well, if you're new to my channel, I firmly believe that any lens can be a portrait lens from the GM 14 millimeter prime to the GM 400 millimeter f2.8. Even though this lens is extremely popular with travel photographers and videographers, you might be surprised with the results you get out of it for portraits. And don't worry, I have plenty of video tests to take a look at coming up in this video as well. Let's walk just down here. If you could stand maybe just here in the middle. I want to try and get like some of those vines and not get the port in cool. the background, hopefully. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah, I can hide the port with you actually. For today's photo shoot, I'm using the GM 16 to 35 millimeter F2.8 GM2 lens on the Sony a7 IV. I have my camera set to continuous autofocus and I'm using a wide focus area to let the camera and lens do all the work. So be sure to keep an eye on the picture in picture so you can get an idea of its performance. IAF is extremely responsive and sticky with this lens on the a7 IV. As usual with GM glass, using this lens made this portrait photo shoot a breeze and we were able to get through each look so quickly. Throughout today's video, I will also be sharing photos taken on similar lenses but on different shoot days so we can compare the quality. I have some comparisons with the GM 24mm and 35mm f1.4, Tamron 20-40mm f2.8 and a few more throughout. And then do you want to do some where you're kind of like moving around, you can almost like sway or yeah. even pace a little bit back and forth. This 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 GM2 is the much awaited upgrade to the original GM 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8, which is now around six years old. Physically, there have been many welcome updates to the GM2 version. The Mark II includes a focus ring, zoom ring, and aperture ring, which is a must for me on any GM glass nowadays. This lens is external zoom, and while it is rated by Sony to be dust and moisture resistant, I would have loved to have seen this Mark II feature internal zoom like the 70-200 GM2. This lens also features a click switch for the aperture ring, an AF to MF switch, iris lock switch, two focus hold buttons, and has an 82 millimeter filter thread. This lens is pretty small and lightweight at only 547 grams. This is quite a bit lighter than the Mark I, which weighs 680 grams. Gimbal users will be happy to hear that I've had no issues with center of gravity while zooming this lens on a gimbal. Now that you've had the chance to take a look at some of the images I've taken so far, let's get into image quality. Something fun I like to do when using a zoom lens is to see how many photos I've taken during the session at particular focal lengths. I had the most photos at 35 millimeters, surprise, surprise, followed by 16 millimeters, then 28 millimeters, which is a surprise to me, 24 millimeters, and the rest of them all have a very similar amount of images. Fun fact, I did end up using every single millimeter of this lens. I found image quality and sharpness to be superb throughout the entire focal range of this lens. Sometimes wide angle zoom lenses can struggle with detail and sharpness on the widest end, but this 16 to 35 had no problems capturing clear images at 16 millimeters, whether I was further away or closer to my subject, Yasmin. This lens produces extremely sharp images with so much detail. While not completely required for portraits, this yeah, is cool. great for many other genres of photography. Color rendition is great as well. We have very rich and true to life colors in all the images I took in the shade. The only spot I noticed this lens struggling with color and tone is during the backlit photos. I noticed that the subject doesn't cut through as much in the image. The whole photo looks slightly washed out with a little bit of a blue cast to it from the lens flare, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. And yes, I did take these with the lens hood on. Oh, this looks cool. Right, I love this. Oh, I love this, it's so pretty. 
I hope the owner doesn't come out while we're shooting. That has happened quite a few times before. I had no issues with focus accuracy whatsoever in stills mode. This is an extremely reliable lens in my opinion. I'll show you a little series of closer up portraits I took of Yasmin on the 35 millimeter end of the lens. These are all at 100% zoom and you can pause on them if you wanna take a closer look, but they are all tack sharp, aside from one where she's looking away and one which has motion blur. Which, by the way, shows that you can still get motion blur when taking portraits at a shutter speed of 1 over 500. This is why I have my ISO set a little higher than 100. I know that with a fast moving subject, we can get shots with motion blur, so I keep my shutter speed as fast as I can due to our lighting situation. If you could stand maybe just like next to the fence yeah. and I'll get like a little bit of that. The bucket from this lens is round and clean throughout all focal lengths. I took photos on a different day so we can take a closer look at that. This 16 to 35 millimeter GM2 also has great control over chromatic aberration. There are plenty of backlit spots I shot with that are super clean. And then if you wanted to face towards me, maybe you could like kind of hold your hands like that, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I feel like I wanna do maybe one more sitting one. Or maybe we should go across the street. There's just like a black roller door. Yeah, this would be cool if you sit just here. Finally, we have lens flare. Considering it's a zoom lens, this 16 to 35 has a pretty typical lens flare. It has a larger, softer, round lens flare, and then a few smaller, more defined lens flares. For landscape or cityscape photography, I think a blue lens flare is easy to work with. For portrait photography, blue doesn't really flatter skin tones. As I shared earlier with the backlit photos of Yasmin, they look a little bit funky because of that cool color cast. For portraits, warmer colored lens flares are much easier to integrate creatively into your work. And then if you wanted to sit with your feet, maybe facing a little more this way as well. So with Yasmin and I standing in the same spot, I'm gonna get a shot at each of the main focal lengths of this lens. So I'll start off on 16 millimeters. I'm also gonna get another shot where I move in closer at each of the focal lengths and frame each photo to look the same. So I'll start on the widest end first and I'll get them to all look like that. Next, let's test this 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 GM2 for video, and Dan is taking over for capturing these videos of Yasmin. He is using this lens on the Sony a7S III with the camera on a gimbal. A what? Yes, he is using a gimbal. The era of handheld is holding on for dear life. But anyway, we've been thinking using a gimbal for these lens video tests is a better idea. So instead of getting distracted by IBIS, which the lens isn't mostly responsible for, it gives you more chance to focus on the way it focuses, breathes, the image quality, and things along those lines. We'll continue doing video camera tests handheld though, because that's where IBIS is more important to take a look at. This lens is absolutely fantastic for video as well. Autofocus is very sticky and super responsive when a subject is moving around. I found you can really rely on autofocus to get the shots you need with portraits. 
The sharpness looks great, and just like stills mode, we have some beautiful bokeh. You can see the lens flare is quite prominent in these shots when it appears. It's a little jarring when filming in a dappled light location like this. I also have a few more video tests to take a look at that I filmed on a different day, this time with the Sony a7 IV on a tripod. By the way, Dan is using an ND filter for these shots, so that could also be changing the lens flare a little. These are also not the lens's true colors because of the ND filter, so if you want to see the colors straight out of camera, please check out the photos which I shot without any filters. Here we can take a better look at the way this lens tracks. This lens is using XD linear motors. Compared to the older 16 to 35 f 2.8 GM, which uses two DD SSM systems, which is similar to the GM 24 mm f 1.4 prime lens. So I wonder if we'll be seeing an update to that lens soon too. You can see this Mark II does a great job at keeping up with a moving subject, whether it's on the wide or not so wide end of the lens. Before we get to my vlogging examples, let's take a quick look at focus breathing. With focus breathing compensation off, I found this lens to have very minimal breathing on either end of the focal range. I feel like this 16 to 35 is the ideal lens for vlogging, so that is exactly what I'm doing right now. I have the 16 to 35 on the A7S III on a gimbal, and I have the lens at 16 millimeters right now. So this is what it looks like holding the gimbal, my elbows kind of up towards against my body, and this is what it looks like when I hold my arm out. 16 millimeters is so wide. You can see so much in the frame. It's so cool. Not gonna lie, it's a little bit of a heavy rig to hold out for extended periods of time. But um, so yeah, this is what it looks like when I'm just moving it towards and away from my body. We can see the distortion here if I've got my forehead up towards the edge of the frame and we can see how it focuses as well. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in now on the gimbal to 35 millimeters and it stayed nice and balanced, which is cool. 35 is a bit zoomed in for vlogging, but that's what it looks like when I've got my arm extended and what it looks like close to my body. That is all I have for today's review. I really hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. Let me know which ones were your favorite photos down in the comments below. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week and quite a few today, but I'll see you all next time. Bye.